give me a countdown, do whatever you want. I'm going to acknowledge just a couple local people. Yeah, yeah, you should. I know everybody else. You should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should do that. Okay. Absolutely. Come on down, guys. You ready? <laughs> okay, uh, good afternoon everybody and uh, my name is John Moore, I'm the mayor of Asbury Park and greetings from Asbury Park. Uh, sorry the sun isn't out but it's not raining and it's going to be a very nice weekend no matter what the weathermen say because they're wrong most of the time. Uh, it's an honor to have so many distinguished people with us here today. The governor, the governor's wife, uh, the department heads, senators, uh, assembly people, everybody else. I'm going to give a couple local shout outs to uh, our city manager, Donna Viero. Uh, I see uh, Mayor John Pallone from uh, Long Branch here doing an excellent job in Long Branch. Uh, I thank uh, Madison Marquette, Gary Matola, and people for making this happen today. We appreciate that. Chris Rin, VNA, and we're, we're here to talk about uh, many things, especially the COVID. And this is probably the longest speech I ever made, but I'm telling you one thing. The governor has done one fantastic job with COVID. Everything he's done, we deeply appreciate. And I think the second hardest worker besides the commissioner, maybe the third hardest worker is his wife. Uh, the first lady, Tammy, has started her initiative right after this started, and she's probably put in just as many hours as the governor. And I cannot thank the governor and his wife so much for what they've done for the entire state, and especially Asbury Park. And with that, I turn it over to the great governor of the great state of New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy. Well, hey, hey, thanks, John. Thank you, thank you. It is good to be back in Asbury Park. John Moore, thank you, Mayor, for your hosting us here, for your gracious words. It is a real treat to usher the start of another Jersey Shore summer here at Historic Convention Hall alongside you, Mayor, and one of the Shore's great champions, Chairman and Congressman Frank Pallone is in the house. Also with us, First Lady Tammy Murphy. Tammy Murphy, that's a name I should be able to pronounce. The woman who needs no introduction, the Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Persichelli, whose leadership has been invaluable as we've tackled the challenges of the pandemic together, representing the rocking Legislative District 11, Senator Vin Gopal, who's here, both with Eric Hotelling and Joanne Downey, his colleagues. We got Chris Wren, the CEO of the Visiting Nurse Association of Central Jersey Community Health Center. We got Steve Landers, the CEO of VNA, and his bodyguard, Eli, is with us today. And together we are all committed to making this summer. By the way, John Pallone, thank you for coming over from Long Branch with your first lady. Great to have you. We are all committed to making this summer our best yet. Today, with the lifting of the indoor masking mandate, we are taking one of the biggest steps yet, if not the biggest step we could take to move forward in our recovery and get back to the things we all love with the people we love in the places we love. But let's not make any mistake. We are in this position for one reason. COVID won't go away on its own. It's the hard work of millions of New Jerseyans over the course of 15 months that have made this possible. Together, there's no question we have this virus on the run. Having said that, Judy, we announced today 379 more positive cases. Sadly, with the heaviest of hearts, 12 more confirmed losses of life but our hospitalizations are now down below 600, 578, 68 to be precise. And our positivity rate from those folks getting tested, 1.53%. We haven't been in that territory for a long, long time. So now that we've got this thing on the run, let's finish the job. Let's chase it down for good and get ourselves across the finish line. The best way we can do this is by making sure that everyone has easy access to the vaccines that are proven to be safe and effective. We've been encouraging as many people as possible to get vaccinated before they come down the shore, and millions have. More than four million New Jerseyans are already fully vaccinated. But now we're gonna make it possible for beachgoers to simultaneously get some sun. <laughs> Cue the sun, please and at the same time their first shot. And we're calling this one Shots at the Shore. 
Shots at the shore is the result of a broad partnership. Federal, state, county, local, public, private, you name it. All working together for a healthier New Jersey. So here's our invitation. If you're going to spend any part of your Saturday or Sunday, this Memorial Day weekend, along the Monmouth County oceanfront, and you have yet to be vaccinated, we got you covered. We will have stations set up at Sandy Hook, at the Pier Village Gazebo in Long Branch, Jen, and right here at the Grand Arcade on the Boardwalk in Asbury Park, where you could get your first shot. In each location, from 9 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, pharmacists from Walmart and nurses from the Visiting Nurse Association of Central Jersey Community Health Center will be on hand with all three of the vaccines available to us. Those 18 and up can select which vaccine they want, whether it be Pfizer, Moderna, or J&J. &J. Those 12 to 15 will be able to receive the Pfizer vaccine. And for those who select their Pfizer or Moderna vaccines after you get your first shot at the shore, you'll be able to follow up and get your second shot at any Walmart pharmacy location in the entire state of New Jersey. And don't forget one other thing. Getting your COVID vaccine is absolutely free of charge. As I said, this is a tremendous partnership, and I thank everyone who is coming together this weekend. The National Park Service, thank you, sir. Bless you for being with us. The United States Coast Guard Station at Sandy Hook. The New Jersey Department of Health under Judy's leadership. The New Jersey EMS Task Force. The Monmouth County Board of Commissioners, and I had a great exchange he wanted to be with us today. I want to give a shout out to director and friend Tom Arnone and the rest of the commissioners. The city of Long Branch, John Pallone, thank you, and the Long Branch Police Department. And the city and police of Asbury Park, thank you, John Moore, to the chief and the entire team. As well as the visiting nurse, nurse association of Central Jersey Community Health Center. Again, Chris and Steve, thank you. Walmart and Madison Marquette, we got their representation here today as well. I want to thank them. So again, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow and Sunday at Sandy Hook, at Pier Village Gazebo in Long Branch, and the Grand Arcade right here in Asbury Park. Come start your summer off the right way by helping us end this pandemic and move our state ever forward. And also, if that weren't enough, I feel like I'm selling those Ginsu knives at the moment. <laughs> if that weren't enough, act now at 19... No. Also, right here in Asbury Park, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday... We will be hosting, I thank the First Lady for this, a Grateful for the Shot vaccination event in partnership with the St. Augustine Episcopal Church in Springwood Park. So that gives you two locations here, not one but two, in Asbury Park on Sunday. With that, bless you all. Thank you all. I wish you all a great Memorial Day weekend. God bless our veterans and members of active military service. With that, please help me welcome the chairman, the guy without whom we would not be where we are. No matter how good a job we do in New Jersey, we need, we need fighters fighting for us every single day in Washington to get our just fair, and there's no fighter better than this fighter, Congressman Frank Pallone. Thank you, Governor. And I know the Governor has mentioned a lot of people, but I have to go back to some of them, starting with him, because what's been happening over the last year uh, since the uh, COVID pandemic began is that certain people have stepped up uh, and done really an outstanding job and, and I think it's because they really care and they also know how to do things from a practical point of view and number one is is Governor Murphy now you know I when I'm in Washington our committee has jurisdiction over all health care matters and so I see what happens in a lot of states and you're, you're going to say, well, you're from New Jersey, so that's why you're saying this. But believe me, that is not the case. No governor has stepped up more, cared more and done more from a practical point of view to protect people, make sure they had the tests, make sure that they had what's necessary to protect themselves if they were health care workers or ultimately do the vaccine program effectively than Governor Murphy. And I know that sometimes uh, you know, people say, oh, we know he's limiting uh, us uh, because we have to wear masks or this or that. His caution, and that's what I'll call it, was so important because we see so many states where they opened up everything and the virus spread and they had a much worse situation later because they didn't take the proper precautions from the very beginning. So I just want to thank him. I mean, I can't emphasize it enough, Governor. I really can't. And behind and, and, and with him all the time was the First Lady and our 
and Judy, our, our, our uh, health commissioner. You know, we had a delegation meeting with the Congressional, with all our congressmen last week, and we all praised her because we know how she has all the information at her fingertips. This is a scientific effort, right? You have to know the science. And Judy was always out there looking at the science and making decisions and recommendations to the governor about how we should do things properly if we want to do it effectively, and it has been tremendously effective. Now, I want to just say a, a something about Chris Wren and the VNA. From day one, the mayor of Esbury Park knows it. Uh, we were talking back in December when the vaccination, or January when the vaccination program began. He stepped up and he said, the VNA wants to set up this program in a lot of the towns in Monmouth County, and we're going to do this. We're going to get the vaccines. We're going to make it happen. And he did. The next day, the, go the, uh, the mayor of Esbury Park stepped up and said, we're going to use the senior center where we were earlier today. My brother in Long Branch, he worked with the VNA, and the VNA did an excellent program working with the city. Chris has just done an outstanding job in terms of getting the vaccine out. And the, only, the other person I do want to mention also is our legislative delegation. From day one, Vin Gopal and our two assembly people, Joanne and Eric, were out there trying to make sure that there were locations in all the towns or many of the towns in their districts where people could get the vaccine. And I'll just say one more thing about all of them and then just uh, be uh, briefly about what's happening on the federal level. You know, when you talk about this program and this, what we're seeing today is an example of it, this isn't just an issue of, you know, having the mega site and have people sign up on computers. A lot of people have what face what we call the digital divide. If they're in places like Long Branch or Asbury or Newark, where there are many people that are, are minorities or people that have language disabilities or people who, um, uh, you know, uh, are, are just afraid and have vaccine hesitancy, we know or don't have access to a computer. You have to go out, knock on doors. You have to have telephone operations. You have to be able to reach out to people that are hesitant. And that's what this group of people that I mentioned were always conscious of. You know, Vin and Eric, it's totally true, uh, and Joanne, that they were conscious of the fact that we had to go into neighborhoods and places where people were hesitant, didn't have the ability to sign up effectively. And that's what they did. That's what this group did. Now, I just want to say briefly about the federal role. I think you know that uh, I, I have some of you know that I was very critical of what happened last year when Trump was president. I know that, you know, you're not supposed to be partisan and political. I'm sorry, Governor, I have to be. The, bo <laughs> the bottom line is we spent this y last year with President Trump and there was no national plan. States like New Jersey were competing with each other. Places like uh, one hospital competing with each other. It just wasn't right. There was no national plan. And in January, when, when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris took office, they said, we're going to have a national plan. And that was in the American Rescue Plan that the president signed in March. It said, we're going to get this vaccine out. We're going to get this personal protection equipment out. Every state is going to get it, and it's going to be organized on a national level, and we're going to have the resources to provide it. And that's exactly what happened. So anybody who tells me that this the fact that we're in such good shape today, and I'm not saying we're there all the way, but we're, that we're in such good shape today was because President Biden and the Vice President stepped up and said we were going to have a national plan. And an important part of that was getting stuff out to the community health centers, like the VNA, because they were in the, in the vanguard of accomplishing that. So I, I just want to mention that, and I also want to mention this. There's still a lot of vaccine hesitancy out there. I can tell you, we still have in this country the gold standard with the FDA. This was approved uh, on, a, on an emergency basis, but no one should think that the approval of these vaccines, that they should not have confidence in that, th that they should be worried about taking it. Please understand that. Understand you should have confidence in the gold standard of the FDA and what we've done at the federal government to approve this thing. So please, what's happening today uh, here in Asbury and, and in Monmouth and throughout the state with the governor and, and the commissioner is an effort to reach out and to get to every person we possibly can, but everyone should understand that they can take this vaccine with confidence. So thank you very much. Am I introducing the next person? You're good. Thank you. You good? Let's hear it for Chairman, Congressman, my Congressman, Frank Pallone. I literally don't know where we'll be without you, man. God bless you and thank you. Uh, the Congressman mentioned that it takes a village and it takes all different. By the way, representing brothers and sisters of uh, organized labor, Barry Kushner's in the house. I mentioned uh, Madison Marquette, but I want to say by name, Gary Matola is with us and he's with Chris and Austin. Gary, great to see you, man. It's been a while. Ginny Bowers in the house, former Commerce Commissioner. 
Port Authority Commissioner, Board of the Economic Development Authority, and in particular the Sustain and Serve NJ program has been a game changer for folks with food insecurity on the one hand and restaurants on the other. So great to see you, Ginny. It takes a village and it certainly takes outstanding legislators. And we have three of them here today from the 11th and speaking on their behalf, a great leader himself, uh, a dear friend, Senator Vin Gopals. Thank you, Governor. Thank you to the Governor and First Lady for their incredible leadership. The First Lady specifically has gone above and beyond with the New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund. To Chris Wren, who has been doing God's work since day one, Steve Landers and the VNA, thank you for all you're doing. I'll be very brief, just on a short, along with the Congressman and everybody else. When we were, uh, 14 long months has happened and we're now at the end, thanks to the incredible leadership of the Governor uh, and the Commissioner and everybody else. But we think back to March and April when a lot of us were wiping packages. These guys here, police officers, firemen, they were out there fighting a virus that they didn't know what it looked like. We owe them our appreciation. We owe them our thanks. So let's give a round of applause to all of our police officers, firefighters, our nurses, our incredible nurses that were out each and every day. This is hopefully, hopefully the weather will change, Governor, with a little bit of luck. But regardless, this is a, a really exciting time that we've come this far, and it's to the leadership of every stakeholder here. Thank you so much. Well done. Senator Vin Gopal, God bless you and thank you. Uh, I mentioned the National Park Service. I want to mention by name. How could Phil Murphy not have mentioned Pete McCarthy, who is with us today? So, Pete, thank you for your great leadership, and thank you for representing the National Park Service. I don't know where we would be without her. Uh, and I mean that literally in this case. Please help me welcome the woman who needs no introduction, the Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Persichelli. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm going to make this brief. It's, it's a little cold up here. Um, as you know, I want to say thank you to all the elected officials, Chris. Thanks for what you do. These people have been great to me. It's made my job a lot easier. And we knew as the vaccine program progressed in our state, we were going to move through really fast, efficient, operational um, throughput to get as many people vaccinated as possible. We are now moving into communities with our pop-ups, grateful for the shot, um, small places that are convenient, safe, and familiar to people to get as many people as possible vaccinated. So I just want to say, give you a couple of statistics. According to the CDC, New Jersey has already exceeded uh, President Biden's, Biden's 70 percent of first doses. We are at 73 percent of first doses. Since December 15th, we have administered 8.5 million doses of vaccine into people's arms. Today, we're reporting 4.8 million individuals have received at least one dose, and 4 million people in New Jersey are fully vaccinated as of this morning. The power of these vaccines has no question. Just as a point of reference, January of this year, just this past January, we reported more than 5,000 cases of COVID-19 in one day. We are now reporting less than 500 cases. Last spring, hospitalizations were 8,300. Today, less than 600. In long-term care, in January, we had 450 outbreaks. This morning, 130. Significantly down because people are getting vaccinated. Vaccines are proven. They're an effective tool. They're safe. Let's have a healthy, enjoyable summer and Memorial Day weekend. Let's protect our families. And one, two, three, everybody, let's get vaccinated. Yeah. Thank you. Love that. Judy, that is the best, and all of that is because of you and, and, and the incredible effort you've overseen. This, uh, I don't want to make news, but if the weather doesn't warm up, we may have to start brining the roads. Uh, representing the Visiting Nurse Association of Central Jersey Community Health Center and the VNA more broadly, and again, I want to give Steve Landers and his son Eli a shout out. Please help me welcome another great friend and a guy who's been extraordinary throughout this entire pandemic, certainly during the vaccination period, but from day one, CEO Chris Rin. Chris? Governor, thank you. Governor, thank you. 
Uh, there's, there's so many people, you know, to, to, to get to where we are in terms of vaccines, there's so many people uh, that we have to thank from uh, first and foremost, the governor, Governor Murphy, for your leadership. Uh, we wouldn't be here uh, in New Jersey uh, at this stage uh, of success without Governor Murphy's leadership. First Lady Tammy Murphy, uh, thank you for all you do. The P New Jersey Pandemic Relief Fund for what you've done for all federally qualified health centers in the state of New Jersey. Congressman Pallone for your incredible, incredible leadership and support of community health centers and community health initiatives. Commissioner Persicelli for your leadership and what you do at the state health department and to our wonderful, wonderful legislative delegation led by Senator Vin Gopal. Senator Gopal, a good friend, uh, uh, the hardest working guy I know in the legislature. You've just been incredible in the Senate and a good friend. Uh, the assembly members, Hotaling and Downey, uh, always there, always pick up the phone. It's uh, been an incredible partnership here in Monmouth County. Um, our freeholder uh, director and commissioners, uh, I'm sorry, our commissioner director, geez, uh, it's the wind, uh, commissioner director and, uh, and rest of our board of commissioners in Monmouth County uh, for what they've done. Uh, Mayor Pallone in Long Branch, we wouldn't be where we are in Long Branch in our vaccine efforts without your leadership. Thank you, Mayor Moore, right here in, in Asbury Park, where it all started for the VNA. Uh, appreciate your friendship and leadership. Uh, the Long Branch Police Department, the National Park Service, Pete McCarthy for what you're doing this weekend uh, up at Gateway National Recreation Area. The U.S. Coast Guard, who's another strong partner of the VNA in this weekend's initiative to get folks vaccinated. And last and certainly not least, uh, the New Jersey EMS Task Force, who are always with us in our planning and preparedness efforts. Mike Bascom, thank you for your leadership and the rest of your task force partnerships. Uh, been been really incredible. Um, our private sector partners, Walmart, Madison Marquette, the historic owners of, of, uh, of, of Convention Hall, uh, really came together to make the Shot at the Shore initiative come to fruition. It's a unique coalition, uh, as Governor Murphy mentioned, of, of federal, state, county, and local partnerships, along with the nonprofits that come together to make this uh, Shore Shot initiative um, successful. Uh, I want to mention also that uh, the VNA Community Health Center wouldn't be a strong leader in, in COVID preparedness and vaccinations without the leadership of our board chair, Jenna Vaccaro. Jenna, you've been an incredible, incredible partner. Thank you for all that you do. Our chief medical officer, Dr. Terry Schlimbaum, who's responsible and signs off on all of our medical initiatives. Really appreciate it. Um, it's incredible that right here in Asbury Park alone, 26 thousand vaccinations out of the VNA of Central Jersey, 26,000 shots in arms just in small, and, and, and that's a small part of the total 82,000 vaccinations that the Community Health Center has been able to give in, in uh, our march towards that 73% vaccination rate uh, of New Jerseyans that Commissioner Persicelli mentioned just a, a few minutes ago. Uh, this weekend, is about breaking down barriers. Getting shots in arms are about breaking down barriers. And we've been working hard to do that, giving people choice, making vaccine available right here at the Jersey Shore, and allowing people who have busy lives, who don't have an opportunity in another venue to get shots, come here to the Jersey Shore, enjoy it. Hopefully the weather changes, but enjoy it. And, and if you haven't gotten vaccinated, get that shot in your arm, simply put, it saves lives. Um, I would also be remiss if I didn't thank uh, my partner and good friend, Dr. Steve Landers and his son, Eli, for always being there, always being there with all the muscle and all the support that the VNA needs. We have wanted for nothing in support of our nurses, uh, our, our medical assistants, uh, those who have been on the front lines of this vaccination effort from day one. So uh, on Memorial Day weekend on its start, uh, we honor our fallen heroes uh, by celebrating and expressing the way of life that they made the ultimate sacrifice for. We express our freedom with all the beauty and the joy that the Jersey Shore offers with our family and friends. And we can look each other in the eye, we can see each other's smiles, 
we can embrace each other this weekend at family barbecues, and we can do so, frankly, because of the hard work that's been, been done to get us to this point. So with that, thank you all. Be safe. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. And remember our fallen heroes. Thank you. Really well done. Really well done. Let's hear it for Chris Wren and the VNA. Really extraordinary. Thank you all. In fear of potential creeping hypothermia, we'll take a couple of questions, but not many. Anybody? Sir. Yeah, the question is a good one. With the expected weather forecast this weekend, how successful will this, these initiatives be? We'll see. We still think you still see a fair amount of folks on the boardwalk, not so many on the beach. My guess is that's the case in Long Branch, and it'll probably be, be the case in Sandy Hook. But the other important point, and Judy referred to this, it's one of many, many different initiatives under the umbrella of Operation uh, Jersey Summer. So we will see. We'll try everything as long as we can get it. Please, Alex, I didn't recognize you without a mask. If they're vaccinated? Well, I, I, I would say this. No, if you're vaccinated and you choose to take off your mask, that is your right. That We are saying effective today that you can do that. And you, you deserve to do that. I'm doing it myself. If you're not yet vaccinated, I think, Judy, two messages. One, please get vaccinated. The personal health risk to you for not getting vaccinated dwarfs any health risk from being vaccinated. Um, and secondly, in the meantime, please show respect for others and keep your mask on. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I love this guy. Who's going to win the Champions League tomorrow, 3 p.m., CBS Channel 2, where I am? Uh, Chelsea, Man City, I'm rooting for Chelsea, unequivocally. Thank you all so much. God bless you all. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend, everyone. Have a good weekend.